Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Howdy Partner uh, on AWS On Air. My name is Taz Miller. I'm a Partner Solutions Architect here at AWS, and I'm super excited to be joined by Matt from VMware and Arthi uh, here from AWS. Now, when you talk about the migration space and hybrid cloud, it's really hard to have that conversation without at some point VMware entering that conversation. But for those of you who maybe, for some reason, are not familiar with them, I just wanted to give Matt a chance to introduce, what is VMware? I appreciate that, Taze. So VMware as a company is dedicated to delivering enterprise class infrastructure and services so that organizations can get the maximum business impact from their applications. And we've been doing this for some time. If you look in the private cloud space, according to market share by revenue, VMware has 80% or more market share. So today's business applications, they run on VMware. And so what does that mean? It means VMware delivers enterprise class compute, storage, and networking under the most stringent security requirements to deliver high availability for applications that businesses run on. And that's what we do. And we have 500,000 customers worldwide, and we have a phenomenal partnership with AWS to extend that value to the AWS cloud. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that partnership was really called out well uh, just over a week and a half ago at Andy's keynote. Um, that was when we started talking about that hybrid cloud. I think you guys were that, that first first next slide that came up. And so, um, Arthi, can you talk a little bit about that, the, the integration between AWS and VMware? Yeah, Taz, um, I think as Andy called out in the keynote, right, we think of hybrid as including the cloud along with other edge nodes. And as you said, VMware was our first hybrid partnership that we did. And as we've taken in the past like four years of this partnership, what we've achieved right now is we've, we're enabling, like Matt talked about that numerous customers that are running VMware workloads on premises. And what we wanted to do with this hybrid uh, cloud service that we offered was allow customers to seamlessly migrate and at the same time modernize their applications using both VMware and AWS. And VMware Cloud on AWS today for us is our preferred public cloud partner for all vSphere workloads that customers are running uh, on AWS. Sure. Yeah, it's it's incredible the amount of work that's been uh, been doing between the the, the two groups. Um, something that I was curious about is I, I came across there's I, I heard that there's a new IDC study out about VMware Cloud on AWS. Matt, could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the value proposition of this co-engineered solution that VMware and Amazon Web Services have built VMware Cloud on AWS, is we give you a unified platform across the hybrid cloud, meaning that an organization that has built their infrastructure over five, 10, 15, 20 years that is running on VMware can extend that same infrastructure, complete compatibility into Amazon Web Services, into the AWS cloud. And so IDC went to quantify, is that a value? Do organizations get value if they extend and unify that infrastructure? And what they found was pretty stunning, right? When you look at application migration, which is what everyone wants to do to the cloud, they want to move those applications into the cloud so they can they can do wonderful things with them. And I'll, we'll talk more about that. But when you look at that, the idea of keeping the infrastructure consistent, it means that those applications don't have to be reworked. They don't have to be redeveloped. They don't have to be refactored. And by doing that, because VMware delivers incredible migration technology through vMotion and HCX, customers literally can move their applications in an afternoon. We have some customers that have been able to move hundreds of applications within a day or a weekend directly to the AWS cloud and have them up and running in AWS almost instantly with no changes. So what IDC did is they went and did some research to quantify exactly how much money and time does that save. And according to IDC, there's a 57% lower cost of migration due to the fact that you're eliminating refactoring, 57%. So think about it, you're a major Fortune 10 company, you're gonna spend $100 million to move to the public cloud. What if I could come to you and say, look, take 57 million out of that equation 
and do the same job for 43 million. And then you can use that other 57 million so that you can actually be engineering those applications for the future. I mean, that's an incredible value proposition right off the bat. And that's an IDC stat. What they also found is because the planes are consistent, right? I have the same unified infrastructure, the same unified operations. I don't have to retrain my team. So as a result, there was 59% less staff required for migration, 59% less, because you can use those existing skills and those existing talents, and importantly, the existing processes. So what they came back is they were able to basically say, you can move really fast due to these efficiencies. It's not just about cost, it's about time. And they were able to show a 46% faster migration. So if you're going to spend three years to move to the cloud, you now can spend a little over a year and a quarter to do the same work. And that's a massive value for companies that are in a competitive environment that don't have a lot of time to waste, but need to deliver that value and get to the cloud as soon as possible. Yeah, and what are some of the benefits that people are seeing by getting to the cloud faster? What are some of the things that they're trying to take advantage of there? Well, I mean, you guys of all people know the advantages of moving to the public cloud, right? I mean, everyone who's listening to this pretty much gets it, but there's a whole bunch of basic value points that come into a cloud operating model. Of course, you're talking about agility and efficiency, but you're also talking about an infrastructure cost equation that can be very beneficial when you remove all of the costs associated with manually architecting and managing and cooling and storing and running data centers and move to a, a complete AWS centric model, you're in a situation where those costs can come down. With VMware Cloud on AWS, you gain all of that value. On your operating costs, you gain all of it. It's not like it costs more, you get all of that value back. And so we saw in the same study, there was a 39% lower infrastructure cost versus running on premises. And there's also 83% less unplanned downtime. And that's the reliability factor, the, cons the constant monitoring, the management that happens for you. And the, uh, the total cost of ownership and ROI was, was surging, right? With 351% three-year ROI, I believe, was articulated. And I think that that goes to show you that when you're building a business case for infrastructure, and it's always about the business case, there's an incredible value for having a hybrid cloud that is based on VMware, built through the partnership of VMware and AWS together with VMware Cloud and AWS. Yes, I do want to like kind of highlight that what Matt said, right? That partnership. I think uh, what's important for customers is, as Matt said, this is a seamless platform. So for customers who are running VMware workloads on premises, we want to make sure that the experience is consistent. And this is not a platform where we say, hey, go take the EC2 instances and run your VMware workloads, right? That's not simplification for customers. We didn't want to do that. So I think that's where the joint engineering efforts comes in, right? Like we have VMware's engineering team and our engineering team at AWS who constantly working from like the past three to four years on what can we do to simplify this experience for customers? So we launched a couple of bare metal instances VMware was our first beta customer. We actually launched the i3 Metal for them, then we announced it uh, to our customers. But we worked with them to kind of, what Matt talked about, some of the features that VMware provides today, vMotion, HCX, that customers are already familiar with and great technology. We wanted to make sure that works consistently with what we offer and take away all that. We talk about taking that uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting off of customers. We wanted to exactly do that with this. and. The joint engineering innovation is continuing, right? We're launching newer instance types and you were asking about uh, the migration and like what are the other use cases that we see. Migration definitely, as Matt said, is like our number one use case that we see. But we are also slowly starting to see some of these customers are using AWS services and it's not this point A or point B destination, right? These are coexisting and that's the value proposition that both VMware and AWS are bringing to table for customers. Yeah, that's 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 huge. I think for people to be able to take advantage of the stuff that they're used to, but then also take advantage of the AWS services as well. Um, it, it sounds like you know when when we talk about migration, there, there are often like two ways that we go about it. One is kind of like that lift and shift, and you know just kind of take something from on prem, put it in into the cloud, and then you know you you migrate. But what it sounds like is you're kind of allowing us to 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 do both at the same time. It's like you know let's let, let's move stuff into the cloud, start taking advantage of all of like the, the modernization features, like 
so, so quickly. It's, it's really, really quite cool. Um, and so I'm curious now that, you know, you mentioned a lot that the AWS team and the VMware team, that the engineers, they're working together on stuff. What are some of those integrations that we were able to see? So, so, okay, let's, let's explore that uh, a little bit. Yeah. We have a, a common uh, phrase we use around VMware. We've never met a CIO that says, I really want to start over on everything. <laughs> never met that guy or gal. Oh. Um, yeah. We always meet someone that's under enormous budget pressure. Um, their job is innovation. It's not run rate, right? They only get credit when they bring something new to the table. And that's our target customer, right? We want to help that customer use our migration tools, not just to run the existing app in the cloud, right. but to stage it and to get it ready for transformation. And that transformation is often what we call as enrichment. Now, mm -hmm. why do we use that phrase enrichment? Well, the idea is simple. If I have a, a quote to cash application, I'm running my business, I'm a retailer, I, I, I've got it dialed in. I've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on this thing over decades. I got it. I got it going. It's got data sources. It's integrated. I want to take it to the next level. Enrichment means let's get it onto VMware Cloud and AWS, and then let's open that application for its next wave, its new generation. And to do that, you take what's already there and you extend it. And that extension is the real value. And this is where the developers get super excited. There's no limits whatsoever to what they can do with that applications. They can take what they already have, and then they can leverage all of the brilliance that VMware Cloud on AWS delivers through the integration with AWS services. I think there's over 200 now, Arthi, right? Of services, AWS services. And our customers are taking these applications and incorporating these services. Everything from machine learning to data warehousing, to extended storage, to IoT, um, even artificial intelligence services, they're able to extend and enrich that application. A good example, I have a good customer in retail that was able to use these services to enrich data pools so that they could, looking at their trends, incorporate retail information based on weather patterns and do that entirely through AWS services without having to start over, having to totally sure. revamp their app. It's, it's just an, a natural extension. Uh, Arthi, I don't know if you have things you want to add on that front. Yeah, I think the TAS, the integration is something that when you ask the question, what did we innovate on, right? That integration is something that we've been constantly working on, uh, helping like developers and like uh, even VMware admins for that matter to make that seamless integration between the AWS services. And as Matt pointed out, right, I think Matt, I think with reInvent will probably exceed the 200 number. Uh, I don't know what the current number of yeah, services kidding, count right. is right now. Um, <laughs> but, but I think what's important is as Matt said, right, we've seen like, for example, financial institutions move their VMware workloads into VMware Cloud on AWS but then started looking at things like a data lake architecture task, like completely on AWS, making, uh, taking advantage of like these services that AWS provides to make insights of, like look into insights of what that data is doing and enriching like that enrichment that Matt talked about, enriching their applications that they're running on VMware Cloud on AWS. So it could start with something very simple like backup, right? Using our storage services from like S3 or Glacier, and going all the way up the chain to like AI and ML and uh, data lake architectures. Yeah, yeah and, and, and the CIOs, that's what they want to do, right? They want to be able to stand up and say, look, we had this application, we were doing it all in-house, all in our own data center. In one year, we took that application and we got it onto VMware Cloud and AWS. I'm on the AWS Cloud and look what we've been able to leverage. Look what we can do now. Look at the value we're delivering to a customer that we couldn't do before. And we were able to do it on a time frame like this as opposed to if we tried to do it ourselves, you know, I'm going off the screen, but you, <laughs> you kind of get the point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you've got customers in in retail. You mentioned that one story there. You've got finance. What are some of your other like favorite customer stories where uh, AWS and VMware have been able to work together? So um, we have in, an enormous customer base. Um, we've been at this now for, for four years. You're absolutely right, Arthi. It's been four years. I, uh, I've been with this project since the beginning. Um, I've enjoyed the partnership. And I should tell you, um, every step of the way, it is a hand-in-glove relationship with AWS. We meet daily and the co-engineering conversations 
are seamless. But more importantly, going back to your customer question, the sales integration is seamless. Our sales teams are working together to delight our customers around the world. So we have customers in practically every vertical. We have customers that are in government. We have customers in every geography now. Whether you're talking about financials or energy production or retail or healthcare, we see it all over the place. I could talk about any of these, but I'll talk about healthcare with you for a second. With COVID, which we were all experiencing, we've been able to see some transformative, amazing technology extensions to help our healthcare customers treat more patients. The testing and treatment needs have required cloud infrastructure, largely because the need to scale was there and they couldn't even get hardware for their data centers because of all the disruption that COVID has provided. Through VMware Cloud on AWS, we, see an, we saw an absolute surge, especially around VDI use cases, where we can extend that capability directly to clinicians, they can service those customers. And now we see applications moving to the cloud on top of the VDI in healthcare, where they're leveraging the extended services to provide that, that additional value. There's no doubt in my mind that when we come out of COVID, technology transformation, especially in the cloud, will have accelerated by orders of magnitude because we've built muscle memory as an industry on how to do it, and that's been a major tailwind. I could also talk a lot about the manufacturing space as we've seen the same issues have happen with regards to this environment. Their need to leverage and maximize cloud infrastructure to deliver that value and to take their applications and extend it What's happening in manufacturing is really fascinating. The ability to really optimize supply lines and to ensure that you're getting real-time inventory, maximizing your cost, all of this is being done with more powerful instance types. So the work we did with I3 and I3EN, this is amazing horsepower that we're delivering on VMware Cloud on AWS to those verticals. Arthur, you may have one yeah. you may want to speak of. Yeah, I think uh, something we did very recently, Tez, was PennyMac. I think Matt talked about the VDI and how the pandemic has, uh, uh, we're seeing a lot more like VDI-based use cases. So my team worked with PennyMac, we've been with them, and we also had the VMware team jointly engaged with them. Uh, they migrated their entire VDI infrastructure to the cloud. So I'm talking about like approximately 4,500 desktops, right? And I think with uh, the, the cool factor here is the time to migration, right? We're not talking about like months or years. Like you talk about like such number of VDI. The key thing is the time to migration, the performance. They've been immensely happy with the performance that you're seeing on VMware Cloud and AWS. Uh, and both teams, like our professional services team, VMware's team, I think that's the key is this partnership is we go together to the customer to present, like to help them with what they want. And PennyMac is one of the recent examples that me and my team have been working on and as I talk about that modernization journey this is also like another cool use case with PennyMac is they're also now integrating with native AWS services things like serverless for example they're building things on Lambda that talks to uh, that integrates with what they're running on VMware Cloud on AWS. Something that stands out to me as you're telling the stories, it sounds like, you know, the, the VDI solutions, that was a that was a really pressing need. Like we just need to get this done, we need to get this done fast. But Really, that's just the beginning, and it's not like a sh just a stopgap. You know, this is like a let's move, and then like let's continue to expand here. Just because we've moved the VDIs doesn't mean that we can, you know, next year or whenever things go back to the new normal, that we're just going to stop using those. No, in fact, once you've got there, that's a great start to continue to build and continue to integrate. And I think that that's really cool that Fannie Mac seems to be doing that with like your example with Lambda those types of things and so yeah awesome very 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 cool there and so one question that i have is what's what's next uh what what should customers uh be looking forward to to next so let's talk a little bit about the modernization side because i think okay. this is going to be uh the wave that's that's crashing next uh over us um I believe going into 2020, this was going to be the year of modernization, and we've seen some of that for sure. Yeah. I think with COVID, it actually became the year of keeping the lights on, and many customers, they all focused on, well, we got to get these systems scaled up, we got to go all digital. Well, now the modernization wave is coming back in, and, and they've moved in mass in many, many ways to getting those applications running on VMware Cloud and AWS. And now they're starting to look at how, how do they move that forward? And this is a developer conversation, right? So VMware delivers 
enormous breadth ecosystem when it comes to applications that have been running for enterprises. And that ecosystem includes development tools. So CI, CD, time, uh, pipeline tools, our development, uh, DevOps solutions, we, we're bringing that breadth. Obviously, AWS brings an enormous breadth. The developer community at AWS is the best in the world. So we're bringing both of these worlds together. And so our side, how do we maximize that, right? Well, it's all about automation and transformation, and we're delivering an enormous breadth of capabilities here. We provide seamless developer experience across the entire platform. We have a development center, we got a development tool library, automation tools. We talked about the savings associated with customers that have largely invested on premises. All of those tools will become available to them in their current form. Right, so if they move to VMware Cloud and AWS, they get to reuse that capability. So here they have the capability to really extend. The Developer Center provides access to content for automation integration. Um, the tools, we've got that wide range of developer tools, the SDKs, the APIs, we can have samples, automation tools. We, you know, we're fully integrated with all of the modern exposed environments, Power CLI, DCLI. Um, we support infrastructure as code, we expose all of that. Um, and because we're integrated with our ops layer, you get all of that vRealize goodness. So if you're using vRealize operations cloud and our log inside cloud, all of that becomes available to, to a development environment. Um, but that's again, looking at the tools they have. I think what's interesting for us is the transition to Kubernetes. Right. So we announced um, earlier this year that VMware's technology has been replatformed on Kubernetes. And with VMware Cloud and AWS, we're delivering VMware Tanzu support. So full VMware Tanzu support, that's our Kubernetes stack. So this is enterprise ready Kubernetes runtime, unified management. We actually can manage all Kubernetes clusters, whether they're in VMware or not. And we give our customers the ability to get that VMware supported Kubernetes runtime, which gives you the optionality to leverage Kubernetes for building and managing those applications. So it's the real Kubernetes, it's the latest on the truck, it's open sourced and aligned. Um, it gives you that consistency and it gives developers an operation friendly environment for them to be extended. So you have the Kubernetes capability. And then we talked about the AWS services capability. So by leveraging those two in tandem, customers are going to be enriching those applications. They've moved and they're going to be extending them. Arthur, you probably have some views on this you'd like to share. Yeah, uh, I think you kind of led me into the right uh, segment here with the Kubernetes. We just launched the uh, Amazon EKS distro at reInvent uh, this week. And what we've also been doing, Taz, is working with VMware on the Tanzu uh, side of things. And so we just launched a blog post as well on how VMware Tanzu and the EKS distro can help customers use the best of Kubernetes. So that's an ongoing partnership that we have on the Tanzu side and our container uh, platform for AWS. And uh, I think I'm like setting some primer is, if you remember, we also announced another version of Outpost a couple of, uh, a year back uh, with the VMC Outpost platform. I think that's a big thing because as Andy talked, I think we want to bring our edge nodes to customers as closely as possible. And that's something we are working on to deliver to our customers in the coming year. Yeah, let, let's talk about that, right? This, this idea of, of a local cloud. Um, people still have latency requirements, they have edge requirements, they have lack of IT excellence in many of those circumstances, right? We're super excited for the work we're doing on the Outpost side to extend the VMware Cloud uh, on AWS capability directly to those use cases and creating, again, that unified platform for customers who have built and, and desire that and, and can maximize that, right? Um, I think, you know, from my point of view, Arthi, the, the services integration, we, we talked about that earlier, but it, it begs repeating, right? The IoT services that you guys are, are delivering, this is an enormous value for edge use cases. The optionality of incorporating tons of unstructured data, processing that data, and be able to provide insights, that real-time insights, that is massively valuable. And we have customers that are also experimenting more, more and more with SageMaker, the ability to really look at ML models and get that moving as part of an extension. We're excited about this. A lot of that has to do with data, but it's not just limited to that. We have you know, the basic re-engineering that really allows for efficiency, the adoption of S3, the adoption of Redshift, um, all of that provides efficiencies and integration with those existing apps is something people can do very easily once they're on this platform. That's amazing. And so just uh, as we wrap up here, um, 
where can customers that are watching this go to, to learn a little bit more? So we have all kinds of stuff uh, available on the internet on this. We've been writing stuff for, for years on this. Um, so you could go, why don't you talk about the AWS portal first, Arthi, and then I'll, I'll talk about VMware's. Yeah, sure. I think um, Ted, as Matt said, right, we've been publishing a lot of like blog posts and reference architectures that go on the APN channel blog that we have today. And uh, what we're also doing jointly with VMware going forward is taking some of those customer use cases that we're seeing on VMware Cloud on AWS and that modernization piece that we talked about to produce like uh, reference architectures and like videos on our both channels that customers can take advantage of. The services run on the VMC console itself and Matt can talk about it. Yeah, so, um, you know, lots of great stuff on the internet. Um, you can follow our Twitter accounts, uh, VMware Cloud. You can go to cloud.vmware.com. It's the headline service. Um, from VMware's point of view, AWS is the preferred cloud for vSphere for, for public cloud for vSphere based workloads. We're super excited about that partnership, what it means for our customers. And so we blog all the time, tons of videos out there. Um, but I do think that depending on where your relationships are, whether they're with VMware or with AWS, you're going to have the same exposure to information on this service. And that's, a, it's a testament to the hand in glove relationship the two organizations have built, the high trust relationship we've built over the last four years together. That's, that's awesome. Tons of good resources out there. Another place people can go is uh, the sponsorship page here for, for reInvent. So definitely go go check that, that out as well. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up on this episode of Howdy Partner on AWS On Air. Uh, thanks again to Arthi and especially Matt uh, for joining me uh, here today. And so, and thank you all uh, for watching and uh, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye.